Jimmy Johnson going below the line the lap cars here that's not out of bounds as it is at Daytona and Talladega he's led every one of the 29 laps so far and they left here at this race last year embarrassed but I think today their intent are to embarrass everyone else I think so in 2212 races in what's now NASCAR's Sprint Cup Series only twice has a driver started worse than 40th excuse me qualified worse than 40th and won the race the 1950 first the first Southern 500 Johnny Mance in a Plymouth started 43rd and at the one mile Raleigh Fairgrounds the first NASCAR super speedway to have lights 1953 Fonny Flock the winner but since 1953 it's never happened Wow hmm. that's trivial that's Aflac you know as I said that about Jimmy Johnson and uh, I was just thinking last weekend he walked the dog on him for about the first hundred miles and all of a sudden that car went off so you're not out of the woods yet there I don't no. think they're going to probably hold their breath till they get down you know maybe halfway car still running this good you are absolutely right because I know that was very puzzling to check crew chief as to why they got off he said they got off on their changes and they just could never get it back the one difference here today I think other than rubber going down on the racetrack the track is not going to go through a huge transition like last week when we started in daylight and ended at night. There you see Chad Knauss, Jimmy's crew chief, on top of the pit box. Well, it, as hot as it is, though, you're going to slide more. You're going to slide up the hill more even if you're trying not to. So that could be a factor, too. David Rudiman driving for Michael Waltrip, running 24th after taking the green flag 40th. Did he catch the wall a little bit ago? Let's see here. Coming off turn four, car just slides up the racetrack. Just, yeah. Yeah, you see the black mark he left, but. A little bit of dust flying. This car is pretty tough. I tell you, we've seen these things scrape the right, wall. Right, right rear, Roger. That's his spotter. He was trying to pass John Andretti at the time. And Rudiman was one of those cars we talked about at the top of the show. Had a great qualifying run on Friday. Looked awful Rudiman, good in both practices. Good time, and then had to go to the rear of the field because of the engine change. A perfect day for racing. 70 degrees. Bright sunshine, a few wispy clouds, and no chance of rain. Sorry to those of you in the eastern United States that are becoming snowbound over the next uh, 24 hours. You see the American flag there blowing a little bit. Uh, we don't. I don't think we have near as much wind today as we've had the last couple of days, but. Darrell talked about that 12 car, David Stremme. He may very well, other than maybe our leader right now, have about the best race car out there because he has run Kevin Harvick in the 29 and Kurt Busch in the two down. Yeah, he's one of the ones that did the tire test here. There were four of them, Carl Edwards and uh, Mark Martin, Stremme, and uh, Brian Vickers, uh, one from each manufacturer. And I think it's really paying off for that 12 car because he looks fast. Now Jimmy Johnson has a two second lead but from Kurt Busch on back things are closing up for second place. Steve. Mike you talked about Jimmy Johnson down around the bottom. He said the bottom is good but he told Chad Canals I can't arch it in like I did yesterday. Overall the car just a little bit tight Chad Canals saying car will get better as we put more laps on this racetrack. Yeah he's only beating everybody by two tenths right now. They need to work on that thing. I really think that's what happened to him last week. I think sometimes, I know the driver has a lot of input. Sometimes you got to really not listen to him and just watch his stopwatch. Riding with Carl Edwards in the 99 car, started back in 14th. He's moved up in the top five, trying to go. He will accomplish, I think, going by David Streaming in the 12. That will be for fourth. So, Mike, one thing I, I think these drivers have failed to still uh, realize, this car will never be perfect. This car will never drive the way the driver wants it to. You've got to look at your car versus everybody else's car. And you're better than everybody else, and that's all that matters. And that's a function of the rules package and the COT platform, but it's the same opportunity for everybody. And that's where that crew chief sometimes have to, has to be a pretty good salesman looking at the score monitor because that'll tell the story right there. Jimmy Johnson has led the first 42 laps of this race. The most drive, the most laps a driver has led from the start here, 50 by Jeff Gordon in 2003. He crashed late in the race, didn't win that day. 
I believe he's going to have his hands full here just shortly because Carl Edwards in that 99 is picking them up and laying them down. He just drives by Clear Kurt Busch in the two. That moves him into second, about two seconds behind leader Jimmy Johnson. What I like about that 99 car, I've noticed him. He can run high and make passes, or he can take her down on the white line and make passes. The defending champion of this race, Carl Edwards. Let's have a look at the biggest movers through the field. Jamie McMurray, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon just David cracked Rudiman. the top 10 and not surprised at that 26 car. He's been good the whole time we've been here. He just didn't get a good qualifying run in. Well, he's been good this first three races. I mean, he was great at Daytona, had a good car last week at uh, Fontana and running good today. How about Jeff Gordon, Matt? Mike, at the conclusion of last week's race at Fontana, Steve Latar looked at his race car, which almost went to victory and said, we're calling it audible. We're going to swap the cars that we were going to run. This is the car that won, almost won with at Fontana. They made a major changeover with the driveline, swapping that out, the engine, the running gear, the brakes. They did that this week here in Las Vegas at Brendan Gaughan's race shop. Gordon very pleased with the call and very pleased with this race car early on. These next couple laps of clean air, see if you can give us a direction. Your lap times are spectacular, man. You're real fast. I'm real good down to one and two, three and four. I'm pushing, but the back end wants to step out. Gordon cracked the top 10 back on lap 42. And communication between the Max Pappas crew and Gordon's on when they're going to hit pit road. So if it's under green, they won't have any issues pitting at the same time. Jimmy Johnson beginning cars, Casey Mears and Robbie Gordon there. You know, I like that information that Steve Latart was asking for. Give me feedback on your race car when you're out there and other cars are not affected. Don't give me false information. I have a little problem, though, looking at our monitor in uh, lap times and him telling it, telling Jeff that he, had, he has the best lap times out He's there. He's being a salesman <laughs> again. Pretty good salesman. <laughs> Kyle Busch trying to march from the back, and uh, here's, here's to pit road after getting lapped. It's a little bit early, but I think there's a method to the madness with Gil Martin. You know what? We're not that far. We're only about maybe of the cars that didn't make a pit stop. We're within a 10 lap window. I just got lapped. Let me get in there and get fresh tires and get this car better. Yeah, you just try to hang in there as long as you can. But once you go a lap down, you got to work. You got to come to pit road. Kyle passing Regan Smith. That's for 22nd. There was a big pack of four cars that Bush had to negotiate and did so successfully. Myers McMurray, who is 17th after taking the green flag, 36th. Darrell, you're right. He's had a great race car. He got caught up in that wreck on the back stretch at Daytona and then had a brake line leaking last week. Looked like he had a good top five, top ten car. Some last week looked like he had a good top five, top ten car. Some concern this morning about Jamie's health. Uh, he didn't feel good uh, getting in a car. He's been real sick, and he said, that actually when he's in the car and the car goes in the corner and he pulls some G's, makes his eyes hurt real badly. Mm. So they were a little concerned about him. It's a mile and a half racetrack, but Michael Walter from the 55 is going about right a mile and three quarter. That's Booty Barker talking to Michael. And that would be a scheduled green flag stop, but he's been basically about two thirds away up the racetrack all the way around this track, but making up ground. Now, isn't this the first race of the season where we've had trouble with pit road speed quite a bit? Uh, Casey Mears was just too fast entering on his green flag stop. He has to do a pass through and, penalty. And it's very easy from up here to see why. Look where the commitment cone is. I mean, you don't even get off the racetrack until you have got to be. Here comes Dale Jr. on pit road right now. you got to be down to nothing when you get to that line, and that's coming off the track at 160 miles an hour. Now, pit road speed is 45 miles an hour. That's what... Dale Jr.'s at right now. They give you a five mile an hour leeway, a variance. The teams know that. And mirror speed was clocked at 50.1. Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying his car is neutral. He doesn't need any big changes. He said, I'm a little tight in the center. The longer I run, the better it gets. Don't make any big changes on my race car. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson also coming down pit road saying his car is just a little bit snug. Again, no big changes as well on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He said the car has gotten better. He was able to arc the car in as the last one on the racetrack, as Chad Canals promised. Four tires for 
Jimmy Johnson. Reed Sorensen, Sam Hornish in, Joe Nemechek, Casey Kane, and David Strim. And Bernhardt, too fast entering pit road. I wonder, after 32 penalties yesterday, and they're starting the same thing again today, I wonder if somebody ever figured out it might be a little bit of an issue about getting that line moved down there, because they just can't get slowed down that quick. Steve. Mike, pretty aggressive changes for Kurt Busch. He says, I need some more grip. They already made an air pressure adjustment and also a track bar. Christo. Harvick is just a little bit tight in the center, but Kevin said, I have got something figured out. Do not make any changes. Matt. Service already complete for the 99 of Carl Edwards. A chassis adjustment. His car just a tick on the free side going into turn three. Joey Logano becomes the leader of this race. I believe that may be his first lap he's ever led in a Sprint Cup Series race. And Kyle Busch, the second place car, Logano's teammate. I've been watching Joey on the scoring monitor Hello, in this point nice car. conservative this time, getting on pit road. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming now. Start breaking now. Going to make his first green flag stop at Las Vegas. Oh, make sure you all your green lights. Right there. That's where you have to start that 45 at that cone you saw. And see, you 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 got to get off the racetrack. You can't idle down there in that groove coming off the track. You've got to come off hot or you'll get run over. So really bad situation right there. Dick? And the crew had warned Logano that he needed to be very, very careful on this pit stop since it is his first hot pit stop in Sprint Cup competition. And the kid did a great job. He stopped right on the line. And this is a very experienced crew that they did their job. There's our leader right there, Kyle Busch in the 18 car. But remember, he pitted on lap eight for fuel only so he can go a few more laps, but he's coming to pit road now. Yeah, if he had taken tires and fuel, he could have had that advantage. But with only fuel, he uh, probably needs tires. Regan Smith, too fast entering, passed through penalty as Bush and Denny Hamlin come to pit road. Joe Nemechek just served a penalty for a missing lug nut, and Robbie Gordon's our leader. Krista? The 11 of Denny Hamlin is in. They're making a four-tire change and feel you also see an adjustment. The wrench back there to make a half up on the right rear. Matt? Kyle Busch slides to a stop in his pit. His crew chief Steve Addington calling for a track bar adjustment. Kyle's biggest complaint is the car was just too free. And then right before the stop said it was almost arrow free or the chassis free. A little bit of time loss on the left side. He's away. Robbie Gordon stays on the racetrack in that seven car, but he was another one of those cars that pitted on lap eight. So he has a few more laps he can go. And you know what? He's out there leading the race right now. And those five bonus points for a team trying to stay in the top 35 can be critical. I think it was last week, one of the last owner drivers in NASCAR. Nothing against Michael Waltrip and Tony Stewart, but those are multi-car big operations. Robbie Gordon's is a solo effort, one car team. He's the driver, he's the owner, he calls the shots. Yeah, Michael and Tony, they have, they have partners. He comes to pit road, so that looks like it's gonna cycle through these green flag stops, put Jimmy Johnson in the 48 back at the front. And it'll put Carl Edwards just half a second behind him. It leaves Dale Earnhardt Jr. off the lead lap after a drive-through penalty. Yeah, and it, it, I watched Jr. come down pit road because I wanted to see how he got into his pit box. He was going so slow. He was, I, it looked like he had slowed way down just to be sure he made no mistakes and then gets a speeding penalty. Now, all of these timings are electronic from the scoring transponders on the car. No stopwatches, no subjective, no guesswork. If the meter says you're speeding, Pay the price. Might need to raise the speed limit.